Hi everybody, this is Paddy from Odds on FPL. Today here I'm going to be doing a quick video talking about last week's team, what I'm planning this week and all of that sort of jazz. So anyway, going on to last week's team, I got 62 points with a game week rank of 4,845,399. Not a great week, mainly because of the fact we captain Salah. To go through the team, we brought in Mendy, he got 3 points, conceded against Leicester, but Chelsea went down to 10 men pretty early on. <clears throat> Made four saves, overall looked quite well. Um, I think Chelsea as well are going to improve quite a lot with the signing of Fofana. Looking at um, their next few fixtures as well. If we go in here. They've got Southampton away next, West Ham, Fulham. They're three nice fixtures. I think they will get a clean sheet in one or two of those games at least. Looking at the defence, a lot of people still trend to Alexander-Arnold. Fortunately we didn't. Uh, he was amazing. He was one of the better players in that 9-0 win. He scored, he got an assist, he got a clean sheet, and he got two bonus points. Then, looking at the rest of the defence, Man City look a bit crap defensively, don't they? They are just conceding goals for fun, but their XG against is quite low. So they're conceding poor quality goals, essentially. And if, realistically, if you're looking at the next few games, Forest, Villa... Said, um, uh, Spurs, Wolves in those next four games you'd probably expect three clean sheets um, but right now players like Joe Cancelo are not proving worth their value Reese James is, is just ticking along nice. he's ticking along nicely sorry, 7-7-1-7 seven, seven, seven. pretty good uh, for this price point of 6.1 million as well he's looking pretty decent the midfield then, Salah if you had told me before the game that Liverpool were going to score nine goals and Salah was not going to even be involved in one of them. I would have just laughed at it, but I guess that's what you got to do in scenarios like this. Sometimes good decisions have bad outcomes. His XGI was over one. I think it was the second highest player in the whole team. So sometimes it's like with Kai Havertz last year. Sometimes uh, good decisions have bad outcomes and sometimes bad decisions have good outcomes. Just variance. Uh, just got to take it on the chin, I guess. Uh, also, finally, Saka scored more points than Martinelli. But together with Jesus, in total, they got eight points, which is a lot less than you'd be expecting from Arsenal. The next game's against Aston Villa at home, and then it's Man United away. Then it's Everton and Brentford. I don't know how good Man United are. Um, they've won two games in a row, and they're bringing in Casemiro. I'm not sure that will be a game to target players, so this could be a game week where you could consider... Moving out an attacking player. But Villa, they don't look up for it, especially under Steven Gerrard. Neto again, he had a, a chance early on, almost went in. Then he had an assist disallowed late on for pushing Ryan Fraser. It's so frustrating, but you can't take him out, which is unfortunate because they're playing Bournemouth. And Bournemouth just conceded nine goals. Again, then after that, they've got Southampton. These are two of the worst teams in the league. And realistically, I don't think I can take them out. I take I can take him out. I've already lost 0 0.2 million on him. And realistically, it's just painful. Uh, Haaland was immense. He's looked great. He's just joined the Premier League and it's like a duck to water. 17 points overall. He's probably going to get the golden boot. 41 points in three games. He's a bona fide captaincy pick. I would say... The issue with him over the coming weeks, as Pep has said, is going to be minutes. The game against Nottingham Forest or Villa, you would assume one of them he's going to be rotated in. And I'm not sure he'll get the full 90 in either. Uh, against Forest, you would assume that if they're 2 or 3-0 up, the likelihood would be that he would be subbed off early with the idea that they'll play be playing Sevilla in the Champions League in between the fixture of Villa and Spurs. So yeah, it's just something to consider. I wouldn't get rid of him for Kane, but his minutes could be limited. I personally don't think they will be against Forrest, but they probably will be against Villa. So he should get over 60. Then when it comes to Jesus, I mean, he got a yellow card. Arsenal didn't look too great against Fulham. I watched the game. It was a bit boring. Fulham have been good this season. They've really limited oppositions, but look at his impact. He's five. In terms of ICT, three out of 65 players. Tret, one of 65. Everything that goes through him, uh, everything that goes through Arsenal seems to be going through him. And you can't be getting rid of him before the game against Villa. So, 
Yeah, looking at the bench as well, Ward got another one point. That's four ones in a row. One, 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 one. Shocking. Nico Williams as well, one point. Andreas Archer got one minute. So the bench at least are doing what they're there for in case any of these players get rotated. They're getting points, so they'll be transferred in. Um, bearing in mind, we only made one transfer last week and it was from Andy. Uh, so we don't have any rolled over. Next up, I'm going to be chatting to you about clean sheets. Next week, it's Man City with a 58% chance of a clean sheet, which is the only side with over a 50% chance of a clean sheet. Their fixture is against Nottingham Forest, which realistically you would assume would be a clean sheet. Nottingham Forest, new striker signings, Dennis and Owani don't look fully fit, but they could cause trouble to Man City, especially considering Man City just looks like conceding all the time. By the way, these um, come from footballfactory.com. Um, uh, I've compared some of the odds and they all seem spot on. Looking at the top four sides, there's only realistically three sides with over a 40% chance in the whole the whole league. So having players from having two Man City defenders, having two Chelsea defenders, which is still only over 30%, and a Liverpool defender, you should be expected to get decent points this week. So looking at the other ones, if I was to look at the fixtures here on the left-hand side, Palace against Brentford. You don't know what score that's going to be. Zaha could score. Norgard could score. Tony could score. Um, pull up against Brighton. That could be a nil all or it could be a 2 2. Then Southampton against Chelsea. You don't know about how to trust Chelsea, but I think Chelsea are probably better than a 1 in 3 chance of keeping a clean sheet away from home against Southampton. Leeds against Everton. No idea how that will go. Leeds have looked good, but then not so good against Brighton. Arsenal against Villa, I'd probably back Arsenal to keep a clean sheet in that. They're probably better than a 40% chance. Uh, Villa just haven't looked great. Bournemouth against Wolves, not decided of these, I think are going to keep a clean sheet. But Wolves would probably be the more likely with Jose San involved, which explains why they'd be fifth overall. Then City, obviously, I'd probably have them at a 70%, to be honest. But you never know, uh, considering how they've been. Spurs are probably a better chance than a 26.32% uh, chance of a clean sheet. But... Yeah, I just think under Conte they'll keep a lot of clean sheets, but it is a London derby. Liverpool against Newcastle, I would assume, because I think Wilson's out, Liverpool will keep a clean sheet. And then Leicester against Man United, I don't trust either of these sides to keep a clean sheet. Looking at Man United at 23.23%, probably a bit better than that, but away from home, they've been terrible. Like, they, obviously they got the result there the other day, but overall they've just been terrible away from home. Leicester as well, just don't look like keeping a clean sheet at all. Uh, then when we go into the next section, which we'll be talking about goals, this is based off of players that essentially play the full 90. As you can see, Erling Brett Holland is the best pick of all at a 71.43%. Then next up is Julian Alvarez and then Mohamed Salah. Of the players over 50%, these are the only three. And I would assume the only two that would start will be Salah and Braut Haaland. The issue with Haaland is his minutes are probably going to be a lot lower than Salah. If I had to back between Salah and Haaland, who's going to get 90 minutes? I'm putting all my money on Salah. Um, I think the issue with Haaland is obviously Pep has already said who is going to, you know, who's going to play all the minutes. And it's, he said he's going to be rotated. So that is something to worry about when it comes to Haaland. Is he going to do it this week? He could, but I don't know. But yeah, uh, so the decision for captaincy is going to be based pretty much off of who's got the most expected minutes. Looking at other players who are interesting, Kevin De Bruyne has got a 42% chance with a midfielder from where they get five points. That is interesting. Mitrovic has got a 36% chance. Diaz has got a 38% chance. Firmino, 40%. Then looking at other players like Raheem Sterling, Sun Yum Min, Otan Edward, Phil Foden, Martinelli. Interesting picks. Obviously, I think it's too early to be going differential. Uh, so I would just pick one of Haaland and Salah. Looking at the XG, or well, the expected points based of FPL Kiwi's model, I can see that Salah has a higher minute percentage expectancy than somebody like a Haaland, who's way down the list, because his expected minutes are only 55. So if Haaland's were much higher, his expected points would be much greater than what they are. It would be him, Salah, who would be 
outwards and above better than everybody else. So for me, this week is all about the decision of whether you think that Salah is going to play, well, play more minutes than Haaland. I think both of them will do well. The issue with Haaland is his minutes. Do you think he's going to start and play over 70 minutes? He could get a hat-trick in 60 minutes, so that is something to consider. Essentially, it's just between those two for captaincy. Do you really want to consider... So I think the easiest way to think about this is who do you think is more likely to score in 60 minutes of football? Based off the fact that Liverpool scored 9 goals and Salah scored 0 against Bournemouth, do you think he's more likely to score uh, versus Haaland, who scored 3 in 83 minutes? Uh, I just think if you have to choose one of them, you probably should choose the one in better form, and that's Haaland right now. Anyway, next up, I'm just going to be talking about my decisions this week. Uh, Got to just go back to my pick team here. Currently, my team has Mendy, James, Walker, Cancelo, Alexander-Arnold. I, I won't want to be changing any of those. They're all some of the highest percentage chances of keeping a clean sheet this week. And then in midfield, I already said I can't get rid of the Arsenal players, and that goes for Jesus as well. Then obviously can't get rid of Haaland. Salah, Neto. Neto against Bournemouth. You can't get rid of a player against a side where they've conceded nine goals. And then the bench, I'm not really sure I care about getting rid of any of them. So I'm just going to reorganize it there. I'll put Andreas as my first sub. And as I said, I will be backing Haaland, which I think might be a silly decision, but against Nottingham Forest, they haven't looked like they're going to keep a lot of clean sheets. I know Henderson's look great, but as the ideologue goes, a strong attack will always be a good defense. So the stronger an attack, a very strong attack versus an average defense, the attack's always going to outperform it. So I think the two of them are both very good picks this week between Salah and Haaland. It's just, you're going to pick the person who scored a hat-trick, let's be real. Both of them are good choices. The worry, obviously, is minutes for Haaland. But he could probably get a hat-trick in half an hour against Nottingham Forest, let's be real. So yeah, anyway, that's been this week's quick video. I know it's been a quick turnaround, so hopefully you've enjoyed my brain fart or whatever this is of me analyzing what I'm doing this week. Uh, the first uh, few game weeks haven't been too great at 1.7 million overall. So hopefully it will improve this week and I shall chat to you throughout the week. And also, if you've liked the video, click subscribe, like it, put a comment down below with any suggestions for what you should do this week and I will get back to you. Also, you can tweet me or DM me on Twitter. And I will also come back to you with any answers that you need. So anyway, I've been Paddy. Good chatting to you. I'll see you soon. Bye.